How's it going, guys? We have a medium difficulty question that is extremely bread and butter and high yield for, across multiple systems for 2CK as well as step one, okay? I've made audio cubic questions on this before. The point is to drive yieldness, okay? Very fucking clutch question here. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, man underscore medical, links down below. I mean, Telegram links to the Telegram group channel down below, and I'll start the clip. So 31-year-old woman, G1P0, she's at 11 weeks gestation, and she has an MCV of 76 and a hemoglobin of 10. MCV should be 80 to 100. Hemoglobin should be 12 to 17.5 in menstruating women. Yes, she's pregnant, but generally above 12 is what we want to see for women. Pregnant women, you can get hemodilution, maybe in the 11s at the bare fucking minimum, acceptable, okay? 10, it's low. So three weeks ago, her MCV was 75 and hemoglobin 10. Okay, so barely un or unchanged for the most part, barely changed. She takes no medications apart from pregnancy multivitamin, which she started three weeks ago. Question wants to know the next best step in management. So this is the key concept, okay? As I said, consolidated and clutch here. She's been on a multivitamin. This is what the NBME says, okay? I've observed it, it's not my fucking opinion. The implication is that this contains iron, okay? So she's been on an iron supplement for the past three weeks and her microcytic anemia has not improved. So we can call this quote, she has a microcytic anemia that is non-responsive to iron supplementation, end quote, okay? And that instantaneously means thalassemia. So there's two ways that thalassemia is gonna show up when you assimilate. The first is, as I just fucking said, and as this question demonstrates, you're going to have a microcytic anemia that is non-responsive to iron supplementation. The second is you are going to have a low MCV, low hemoglobin, so a microcytic anemia. And then you're going to check the serum iron and ferritin, and you're going to see that there's normal iron and ferritin. Okay, so this is where it can get a little bit complicated. If this is a family medicine question. Sometimes the next best step in management can simply be written as check serum iron and ferritin. If that were listed here, that would be correct. Okay, that's what we want to do next. You say, well, why is it not listed? Okay, great fucking question. It's not my opinion. This is what the NBME does. So I'm telling you right now, if you suspect thalassemia because you have a microcytic anemia that is non-responsive to iron supplementation, the next best step in management is check serum iron and ferritin. If it's not listed, or you've already done it, and they tell you that the iron and ferritin are normal, the next best step in management is hemoglobin electrophoresis. Now, this is often how thalassemia is diagnosed, incidentally. If you have beta thalassemia minor, or you have one or two alpha mutations for alpha thalassemia, it's often asymptomatic or very minor throughout life, often misdiagnosed as just simple iron deficiency anemia. Okay, if you did a snapshot of this woman prior to pregnancy, as an example, and you see she has a microcytic anemia and nothing further, it might just look like IDA from EG hermenses, okay, very common in women. It's only after you follow up as we're doing with pregnancy and you see that it's non-responsive to iron, or you do the iron and ferritin and see that they're normal, that you say, oh, fuck, this is actually thalassemia. So if you do a hemoglobin electrophoresis, beta thalassemia minor, or major, but major is going to be a sick kid, it's clearly not major here then you would have increased HbA2, which is alpha-2 delta-2, as well as increased HbF. That's beta thalassemia, minor or major. Clearly, this could be minor. For alpha thalassemia, one or two mutations, you're going to have no change on electrophoresis. Okay, very important. Alpha globin DNA testing, beta globin DNA testing, wrong answers on the NBME. I mean, we could speculate that if we have a confirmed diagnosis of thalassemia, and then we could look into her... Uh, her partner, okay, maybe that's when the actual DNA testing comes into play. It's not what they want for this type of question, though, for actual di initial diagnosis for a patient. Erythropoietin therapy, distractor, wrong answer. This is going to be for anemia of chronic disease due to renal failure only, okay? So you can have a normal or a microcytic anemia in the setting of anemia of chronic disease. Students often erroneously think it has to be normocytic. It's not fucking true. Plenty of 2CK questions will give you microcytic anemia. For anemia of chronic disease, if the etiology of anemia of chronic disease is anything other than renal failure, e.g. rheumatoid arthritis, IBD, SLE, any autoimmune disease, 
hepatitis B or C, do not fucking give her erythropoietin. Okay, you treat the underlying condition. Wrong fucking answer in this case. Parenteral iron therapy, wrong answer. This is IV iron. Okay, I did this on purpose. Well, two reasons. One, I've seen parenteral iron therapy written on questions. It's almost always wrong. I don't think I've ever seen this correct answer. The second is, if I had written oral iron therapy, it would have made this question more equivocal because the pregnancy multivitamin is, we have to uh, infer that it contains iron. As I said, this is what the NBME will write. And I didn't want to make it equivocal by writing oral iron. You'll really say, well, you haven't tried that yet. Okay. So your point of consolidation here, thalassemia is going to show up one of two ways, either a microcytic anemia that is non-responsive to iron supplementation, or you're going to have a microcytic anemia and they tell you the iron and ferritin are normal. And you're going to do next best step, check serum iron and ferritin. If it's not listed or you've already got the iron and ferritin, then you're going to go hemoglobin electrophoresis as your answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.